If I was to ask you what your job was, I bet you wouldn't say, I'm an educator. We don't think of ourselves that way, do we, as web professionals? We build stuff. We build websites. We're involved with digital marketing or whatever it is, but we're not educators. Except we are. I actually think that's possibly the most important job that we have to do right now. Because we're in that transition phase, we're in a transition phase between the industrial economy and the digital economy. And that means we need to help people across that divide. We need to encourage them to adopt digital, to use digital as a tool. And that means we need to educate them about the potential for digital, what digital can do for them in their role within the business. Think of it in this way. We want to get to a point where digital is like electricity. It's just ubiquitous. Everybody uses it. The marketing person that wants to do a marketing campaign will use digital to do that. An HR person that has a job to fill will turn to digital to fill that, and so on and so on across the organization. Everybody will be using digital every day to achieve their aims for the business. But we're not there yet. In a lot of organizations, people still look at digital and dismiss it as something that techies do. They don't see it as being something that they should be doing. And it falls to us to change that. We need to begin a concerted campaign of education within our organizations if we're going to educate people about the potential of digital. And I want to share with you 10 tools that are at your disposal for, for achieving this. Tool number one is consider starting writing a newsletter. A newsletter that you send out once a week to the entire organization. And in that newsletter, talk about digital. Talk about things that you've seen online which you think could apply to your organization. Examples of best practice that could be adopted. Look at the competition. Look at what they're doing well and talk about that in the newsletter. Highlight maybe some problems that the organization faces and how digital might be used to solve those problems. And you will find if you do that consistently week in and week out, that digital starts to come to the front of people's minds because every week they receive that email telling them to think digital. And as they do that, then they become more interested, they become more engaged, and they're more likely to use a digital tool if it's appropriate in the situation. Now you might be feeling a little intimidated at the idea of sending out a newsletter to the entire organization every week. If that's the case, if you think that that would go down badly in your organization, then consider starting a blog instead. You could do all the same things on a blog. You can highlight things the competition are doing well, you can talk about best practice, um, you can talk about how digital can help overcome certain weaknesses within your organization. But you will need to promote that blog a little bit more and you'll need to be committed, just with the same as with the newsletter, of doing it week in and week out. But as people see that you're continually doing that blog, as you keep talking about it, word will go round eventually you will build up a readership within your organization. It won't be big, but it will be big enough to start making a difference. There will be those digital evangelists that come along, people that get it, are enthusiastic about it and want to see change. So a blog is a really good option for you. Now, whether you do a blog or a newsletter, make sure every now and again you run a survey. Now, I'm not talking about running surveys for the traditional reasons. Normally, you run a survey if you want to collect data that's going to inform a decision that you make. I'm talking about running a survey in order to encourage engagement. If you run a survey and you ask questions, you get people to respond back to you. You start building a dialogue around digital where you're talking about digital and discussing it. A survey can also get people thinking about the right kinds of issues. Because you frame the questions, you pick the uh, topic to discuss or, or to do a survey on, that gets people thinking about digital, thinking about their answers and engaging with you over that. So surveys are a great thing you might want to run or a poll. A poll is another 
very similar thing that you can do. Now, maybe running a survey um, is all well and good, but it's not as good as meeting with people on a one-to-one -one basis, and sitting down and chatting with them. So consider running some stakeholder interviews as well, where you go around key people in your organization and just have a half an hour to an hour long meeting with them, where you talk um, to one another about um, the potential for digital. Now those meetings go something like this. They talk about their job, they talk about the challenges that they're facing, the things that they're struggling with, and then you come in and talk about how digital might be able to help with some of those things. So you learn about their job and become more aware of what other people within the organization are doing, which is crucial for someone in a digital role, while at the same time you're educating them and showing them about how digital can help them to achieve their business objectives. They're really worthwhile meetings, not only because of that knowledge exchange, but also because you begin to build relationships and begin to, to encourage and excite other people about the potential for digital. Now, of course, the downside of stakeholder interviews is you're meeting one-to-one -one with people and that can be quite time consuming. So if you aren't in a position where you can do that, consider running a workshop instead. That way you can have anywhere between six and 30 people in a room all, uh, all at the same time and you can cover uh, the same ground but with lots of people. Now it's not quite as good as doing one-to-one -one interviews because there isn't that kind of personal connection in quite the same way, but it's very good if you're short on time. Now you can either have a general workshop where you're talking about digital as a whole, or maybe you want to focus in on particular areas where people have got interest. For example, doing a workshop on social media always goes down well. People are always interested and how to make better use of social media. Writing for the web is another one that's relevant to a lot of people within your organization. Those are the kinds of things that, you know, that sometimes you can either do yourself where you run the sessions or alternatively get an outside um, expert in to come and talk with people. Um, I've done many of those kinds of workshops. Another thing that I've done, which is a kind of scaled up version of a workshop, is to throw an internal conference. Now you're talking quite big and ambitious, but it is worth it. When you get the entire organization, or as many people within the organization as want to come, all together into a room for a day of workshops and talks and breakout groups, where you get some people from inside the organization talking, you get some people, yeah, outside experts coming in, you create um, a, you know, a big a program of events for a whole day, and talk digital for a day. That is such a great way of building buzz and excitement around your digital offering and what the potential is. You will be blown away by the response you get. And the other thing is, it's not actually any more expensive than running a whole series of workshops. In fact, it can work out cheaper because you're using one venue for one day rather than having to hire venues again and again and again. So conferences, are another option that you might want to consider. Also, when you launch a new product or a redesign or a new digital asset or whatever, consider throwing a launch party. I know this is a funny thing to say, but it is something you, you might want to give serious consideration. When you launch uh, a new you know, redesign, there's a bit of an anti-climax, isn't there, when it's all over and a kind of deflated feel. So why not celebrate that launch? It's great for morale for your team, but it's also a chance to show what you've been doing, to show digital and give people a glimpse into what the digital team does. So invite your colleagues along, get them along, have some beers and some pizza and just enjoy a time together where you can talk about what you've done and talk about what you're going to be doing next and what your hopes are for digital and just getting them a little bit excited. Now, sticking on the food theme, because food is a useful way of uh, getting people to pay attention to you, consider running monthly usability test sessions and then offer pizza as a bribe for people to come. This is an idea that Steve Krug had in his book, Don't Make Me, Th uh, sorry, not Don't Make Me Think, Rocket Surgery Made Easy, his follow-up to Don't Make Me Think. Excellent book. I recommend both of those books. But uh, in his second book, he talks about the idea of having one day a month 
where you always do user testing. You test two, three people in the morning um, and you open it up for anyone in the company to come and join in with that and attend that. And then over lunch, you sit down over some pizza or some sandwiches, you go over those test sessions, discuss what needs to be done. Now, the reason it's so great to get people involved in those user test sessions is nothing, and I mean nothing, is as good and exciting people and, and helping people to see the importance of digital than watching real users interact with your digital assets. It will have a profound impact on whoever watches it. And so opening up those sessions and getting as many people along as possible, so worthwhile. And it improves your website at the same time because you're doing monthly testing. Now, of course, not everybody's going to be able to make those meetings. And so something else that you might want to offer is to um, send around video highlights of those usability test sessions so that people can see the core you know, major issues that have come up from each session. But don't stop there with your video. What about offering some presentations, sending some presentations around if people can't turn up in person for them? If you do a conference or a workshop, make sure you record those events. Maybe even record weekly videos like, you know, like this. Doesn't need to be complicated or expensive. This is being done with one light that, that costs 30 pounds, a lapel mic that costs six pounds, and a digital SLR that I had already. If even that's too much, you can do all of it with a, a smartphone these days. There is no excuse not for doing video, and video is such an engaging way for communicating your message and infusing and exciting people about the potential of digital. But finally, and probably the most importantly, I want to leave you with the idea that if you want to educate your colleagues about the potential of digital, you need to work collaboratively with them. When an internal stakeholder comes along with a project they want to do, don't just take a brief and then go and work in isolation. Get them in the room, sit down with them, work side by side with them through the length of the project, include them in your team. They will learn more from that experience than any number of workshops or conferences or newsletters or blog posts. Engaging with you and working with you collaboratively will transform their attitude towards digital and I highly recommend it whenever possible. So there you go, there's some tips. But I think what I need to drive home more than anything else is that I would say right now, as we stand today, our number one responsibility in our jobs is to educate our colleagues. We're at a tipping point, moving from one you know, uh, industrial economy to a digital economy, and it's transforming business, and we need to bring people along with us. We need to bring our colleagues along with us, and only we have that knowledge to be able to do that. And so it falls to us to infuse and equip our colleagues so they embrace digital. 